Yo, what's up guys, Tanmay of a Simple Snippets back with another video tutorial on C++ programming. So in this video tutorial, we'll be discussing on the topic of recursive functions. So this was one of the topic which is left out from this entire C++ programming playlist. And if you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of programming as well as information technology oriented video tutorials on this playlist on this channel and you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial as well. For the existing subscribers and users and watchers who've already watched this entire playlist, this recursive function topic was left out and one of the subscriber pointed, pointed out that I should cover this topic. So yeah, here's a dedicated video for recursive function. So in this video tutorial, we'll first go through what recursive functions are. We've extensively covered what functions are and a lot of other topics on functions. So you can see a card on the top right corner which points to the entire C++ for beginners playlist. So go check that out if you haven't seen videos from this playlist. And what we'll do in this video tutorial is we'll first go through the theory, a little bit of theory. Then we'll see a program of recursive function and then we'll come back to a visual representation of what happens behind the scene when a recursive function is called. So that will give you a very clear idea. So make sure you watch this video till the end of the video so that you understand both theoretical and programmatically how actually recursive functions work. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started with today's video. So talking a little bit about theory on recursive functions. So a function that calls itself is known as recursive function. And this technique is known as recursion. So recursion is basically the process of repeating items in a similar way. And in terms of programming, especially recursive functions, the function gives a call to itself based on certain criteria. So this enables the function to repeat itself several times, outputting the result at the end of each iteration, kind of like a for loop or any other looping control structure. And the recursion continues until some condition is met so that it prevents infinite recursion, right? So in even in for loop, while loop, we have a condition wherein the for the control is exited outside the loop. Similarly, in recursion, functions there has to be a condition after which the recursion should stop so sometimes if else condition is used inside this recursion okay so this was a little bit about recursive functions let's see a basic example of recursive function so here's a question there we have recursive function to calculate sum of first n natural numbers so natural numbers start from 1 to infinity so let's say if i say i want to calculate the sum of first three numbers that is first three natural numbers so that would be 1 2 and 3 so the sum should be 6 right that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 so this is the program which does that and this is the recursive function for that you can see on line number 1 we have the signature or prototype of the function you can see return type is int sum is the name of the function and it is taking one integer value. So this is the upper limit of the number of uh, numbers that you want to calculate the sum of. So if you want to calculate from one to three, you enter three. So inside the function, you can see it's saying if num not equal to zero, that is if the number is not equal to zero, then you have to return num plus sum of num minus one. So you can see in yellow, the sum is called inside the sum function itself. So this is a recursive call that is inside the sum function. I'm calling again the sum function with a new argument, which is one less than what the number we've Past. And if the num is equal to zero, then return that number as it is. So this is that if else condition which prevents the infinite recursion kind of scenario. So right now just have a glance through this program and what we'll do is we'll first see what are the advantages of recursive function and then we'll quickly jump to the implementation of this function itself. I know this might not be very clear right now, but once we actually practically see the program and then move on to the behind the scenes of what happens when a recursive function is called at that time, it will be very clear. So we'll exactly use this function itself. So have a glance through it once you can even pause this video and talking about the advantages and disadvantages of recursive functions. So recursive functions make program elegant and cleaner. So instead of using those for loops and looping control structures, you create a function and then inside the int main function, you just use that one function call and then it looks very clean. And then most of the algorithms can be defined recursively, which makes it easier to visualize and prove. Now one disadvantage is that if speed of the program is vital, then you should avoid using recursion because recursion uses more memory and are generally slow. So instead of that, you can use loops. And for the most part, recursion is slower and takes up more of the stack as well. But the main advantage of recursion is that for problems like tree traversal. Now tree is a data structure, which is a non-linear type of data structure and we haven't discussed it. I, I will be having a complete tutorial series on data structure. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. You'll get notified whenever I upload a new video under data structures. So the main advantage is tree traversal and it makes the algorithm a little easier or more elegant to understand and to visualize. Okay. So this was a little bit theory and a little bit explanation on recursive functions. Let's move on to the programming part. I'll show you the program. 
So yeah, quickly open up your DAC++ IDE and you can see I've already typed out the program. So this was the exact function that we saw in the PowerPoint slideshow. So you can see int sum, then I'm passing a number. And if the number is not equal to zero, I'm saying return num plus sum of num minus one, else return num. So in the main function, what I'm doing is I'm declaring a integer variable. I'm saying enter number till which you want to, till you, till where you want the sum of natural numbers to be calculated. Then I take the input from the user and then I create one more integer variable. I'll say int total and say sum and I pass that number. So if the user enters three, I pass three over here. And since this recursive function returns an integer value, I can say total equal to sum. So the integer value returned would be assigned to this total integer variable. That's how return types work, right? So in the end, I say sum of natural numbers from one to the number entered by the user R and I print out the total. Let's save this and let me just quickly show you how it runs. I'll say compile and run. So it's asking enter the number till which you want the sum of natural numbers to be calculated. Initially, I type in three, it should give me six. So there you go. You can see sum of natural numbers from one to three are six. So it is one plus two plus three. So that is equal to six. Again, if you want to check one more time, you can enter four and it will give you 10. So one plus two plus three plus four is equal to 10. You can even cross check it by entering some larger number. And this means that our recursive function is working. So now you must be wondering what exactly is happening inside this function when this function is called over here. So let me just switch to the digital blackboard and I'll show you exactly what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, that is the digital blackboard. I have the int main function over here. You can see this int main. Then I add some code wherein I was taking input. And then this function was called over here. That is in total is equal to sum of n. And then again, I was printing that. So I have just represented that by dot dot. We are just interested in this function call. So in the int main function, which is over here, when this function is called, what happens is we passed number three, right? So let's say we are passing number three. So you can see this green arrow. This three is passed to the first function call. So the first iteration of the recursion happens. So int sum is called number is three. Now we are, we check if num not equal to zero. So since it is three, that we've passed, it is not equal to zero, correct? So the if block is called, that is this block and the else block is not called. So this three is passed. So we say return num. So the num value for the first go is three plus we say sum of num minus one, that is three minus one, which is equal to two. So again, one more function is called over here, right? Since it is a recursive function and this time three minus one, two is passed. So you can again follow this green line or green arrow to the second function call to the same function. So this is the second function call. This time the number is two. Again, inside this, we check if num not equal to zero. Yes, it is true because the number is two, which is not equal to zero, which means that the if block is going to be called. So again, in the return statement, we say return num plus sum of num minus one is two minus one, which is equal to one. So again, one more function call is given to the same function. And this time the value passed is one. Again, following the green line, the green arrow, number one is passed. You can see the values being passed in each iteration. Let me just scroll it down a little bit. So here number one is passed. So this is the third iteration. Again, it is checked. So this was the first, second, and this is the third. Again, inside the function, it is checked if num not equal to zero. Yes, number is one. So it is not equal to zero. Again, if block is going to be called, we say return num plus sum of num minus one. Num over here is one. And sum of num minus one, that is one minus one is zero. So zero is called and one more time the function is called. So this is the fourth iteration. You can see zero is passed over here. Let me just scroll it down again. So this is the fourth iteration over here. In this case, the number zero is passed inside the function call. Now here, if you see if num not equal to zero, now this statement becomes false because num is actually equal to zero. So as long as number was not equal to zero, the if block was called. But as soon as the number is now become zero, the else part is called. And in else part, we are just returning number zero. Okay. So now the return journey begins. So from the fourth iteration, we are returning zero following this yellow line to the third iteration because the third iteration had called the fourth iteration, right? So zero is returned over here. So this part becomes zero and we already have one over here. So one plus zero, you can see return num plus sum of num minus one. So this is zero and this is one. So we are returning one plus zero, which is equal to one. Now this part return is returned to the second iteration from the third iteration. You can again follow this yellow line. So one is returned, you can see over here. Now this one is returned over here in this iteration and in this function call. And we already had two over here. So two plus one, 
let me just scroll it a little bit above. So 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So this 3 is now returned. You can see return num plus sum of num minus 1. So what we are returning is 2 plus 1 exactly. So this 3 is returned to the first call. You can see 3 is returned to the first call of sum over here 3. Now this part has become 3 and this part was already 3. So 3 plus 3 becomes 6 and 6 is re finally returned to the first ever call of this recursive function. So 6 is returned and assigned to this total variable. So this is exactly how the recursive function worked in the actual practical example that we saw and now the idea must be very clear how the recursion works. Now we can go on and on if we entered a new num larger number if, if we would have entered 4 there would have been one more iteration and it would have been lengthy to explain but you get the whole idea right this is a repetitive process that is going to happen and depending upon the number of iterations the functions are going to go inner and inner and then it will again return the values to the above most function call. That's how the recursive function works. Okay. So so that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of recursive function and how they work actually behind the scene and how the value is being passed. And if you understood this video and like this video, share it with your friends so that even they get a good idea about this recursive function and how it actually works behind the scenes. Also, if you want more examples on recursive functions, I can have special practical videos, especially for recursive functions wherein we calculate factorial of a number or we calculate sum of n odd or even numbers and lot many examples are there on recursive functions. So I'll post and make videos specially on those as well. So if you want, you can let me know in the comment section if you want those videos. And yeah, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet subscribed because you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial and new IT and CS oriented video tutorial. So thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.